R Markdown. R Markdown is probably the greatest document file format like ever. Uh, it has, just has so much flexibility, functionality, and you can do just about whatever you want with it. Um, I like Jupyter Notebooks. I mean, it's, it's it, they're cool, but R Markdown combines both complexity and simplicity in a way that you can get everything you need out of it, everything you want out of it, and you don't need more than you absolutely need to to achieve your result. Like, I don't need to know LaTeX to do an R Markdown document in a great and very pretty pretty way. Uh, you don't need to know a lot to walk into it and start producing good documents. I mean, in fact, you create a new R Markdown document. I'm using RStudio because it's the native environment. Um, you can write R Markdown in Vim if you want, uh, but if it involves code, IntelliSense, syntax highlighting, and just more than just a, a basic uh, document, then I'm going to use RStudio. But like, I have my Viking research in... Um, in R Markdown, but like the only code chunks I'm using are the ones I have with my shortcuts to just put in pictures. So I mean, I'm not like coding or writing any code in here really for statistical analysis or anything. It's really just creating a pretty document. So in this case, I might actually write it in Vim um, and use focus mode. But for R, for R Markdown and for all the complexity of R Markdown, I'm usually writing in R Studio. And if you just create a new document, it gives you this blank document I can knit this document and you know, save it to a location. Do, 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 test. It will compile through Pandoc. And we have a document. This is just the, the bare bones, simple template. They just drop in some stuff and you can knit it and you can have a document. Now, our markdown is amazing because it can do so much. But we're getting a little bit ahead. What is our markdown? What is Markdown? What are any of these things and why are they useful? Now, I'm not going to tell you like a literal history lesson, but Markdown was created a long time ago. And since it was created, it's barely been changed. A lot of people have hacked on it, added stuff and done whatever. But Markdown, as we know, basic Markdown has been around for a long time, actually. And it's really useful. Markdown is basically HTML. You have equivalent tags. So you know if you're writing HTML, you have H1 uh, for heading, H2, H3, you know, for subheadings. And you have to have an opening tag, a closing tag. And this is one of the, the reasons why XML is not a great data interchange format anymore is because all these extra tags take up file space. It's not as lightweight as something like uh, CSVs or JSON. Now, HTML has a lot of tags too. Now, unlike XML, HTML has uh, very specific tags. Uh, and you always know what an H1 is going to be and what it's going to do. So in our markdown or in markdown, if you're going to do a heading, you're not going to type, you know, H1, whatever. No, you're not going to type and get all the awkward uh, angle bracket typing. For a heading in our markdown, I'm just going to type the pound symbol, or the hash symbol, whatever you want it to be. You start typing some text. There you go. That is your heading. You can see in the test document that we had, you know, two headings right here. These were a level two headings, but let's remove that one and let's recompile and open up this PDF. So you can see R markdown and including plots are the headings. R markdown, including plots. These are the headings. So equivalently, your hash marks are the headers uh, or the um, the headings tags of HTML. Now, if I was going to do uh, a couple other things, like you can see that they have some angle brackets here and a link, but you can do something else. So let's do, instead of angle bracket there, I'm going to put square brackets with, uh, this is a link inside of it, an opening parenthesis, paren, and then a, at the end, closing paren. Now you can see that this text turned a pinkish color. Now what it's doing is this is now a hyperlink, basically the A tag in HTML. You have the text of the link and you have the hyperlink. Um, but let's do a couple other things before we do this. I'm gonna say our markdown is gonna be bold. We'll add double asterisks. 
instead of typing a bold tag, we can do that. Um, let's see, let's do this R markdown over here. We're gonna make that italic, so I can just do a single um, asterisk. Or this document can just have underscore, underscore, does the same thing. Uh, what else can we do here? Um, ooh, after HTML, let's do a new line. Um, ooh, let's add, let's do, let's do something with LaTeX math. Uh, we could do dollar sign, backward slash, phi, and dollar sign. Preview, yep, it works. Um, so I'm just doing a lot of a lot of stuff here at the moment, but you know, bear with me. It's, I'm going to cover a lot of this. Table of contents, page break for some LaTeX stuff. Um, let's see, what else can we do? What else can we do? <laughs> Print, hello world, please. All right, so we did some stuff. We made a hyperlink, we made some bold and italic stuff, we added a Python code chunk. Let's just knit all this together and see what the result is. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that you can put into our markdown, but what is all this stuff going on? Um, uh, it's getting mad with the LaTeX. Let's see if that helps. Hmm. Is it just the math jacks it's mad at? Wow, this thing is really mad with LaTeX right now. I don't even have any more LaTeX in there. I don't know what it's mad about. But, yes. I don't know. It's getting mad about something. But we can actually change the uh, content of our document to have the same different styling as HTML documents. Bold, italic, uh, underline is not supported in uh, Markdown. But you can jerry-rig it with the U tags in HTML or weird stuff with the span element. Uh, they just recommend not doing underline, but you can do strike through. Um, there, there's cheat sheets everywhere, and in at least in Vim, I have my 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 cheat cheat code key snippet things, um, my hotkeys to do things like making super or subscript text. Um, but like I can make a strike through text by just doing uh, two tildes. And that'll make uh, the text strike through. Let's see if this one actually knits better. I'm not sure what's going on with this thing. Um, this one should knit. And I'll go over what knitting means too. So yeah, we got a document. We've got some stuff in here. This is just some me analyzing and playing with my Fitbit data. This is all horrible. This is just me tossing something together to test out the patchwork package. But strike through text, and this is a heading. So you can see that these tags work. Um, well, I'll just test in this document because the other one was being weird. So we have our bold text. We're going to do italic. And we're going to do underscore italic. Let's do some text with a super um, to the power of 17. It's basically what I'm telling you right here. And then subscript, okay, do a tilde, put that there. And then let's see if I can get the LaTeX working. <laughs> should have worked earlier. I'm not sure why it didn't. 
So you can see it previews. It should work. Uh, save and knit. Let's see what we get. Please work. <laughs> I'm not sure why the LaTeX wasn't working on the other one. But it worked here. So I don't know what it was. All right. So we got, you know, I got my, my LaTeX table of contents. I got a page. I don't think I have the page break, but I have the table of contents, which I like. Um, I really like the PDF LaTeX uh, table of contents. I have my plot code. I have my plot done in patchwork. You know, we got bold. We got the two italics. So you can do it with an asterisk or an underline. It works for both. I have my super text. Um, I have my subscript. And then I even have, you know, the LaTeX MathJack stuff. There's the phi symbol. So all this stuff is supported in our markdown. We have HTML. We have code chunks. We have LaTeX. We have MathJacks with LaTeX, which is one of the the main things you use LaTeX for is, you know, math. Um, we can also have a bibliography. Now I have um, my document over here, my leatherwork. I actually have my bibli bibliography referenced. And then I have a references section at the bottom because the references will be just be put at the bottom. And I actually reference this uh, document right here, just with an at symbol and then the name of the reference. And if you look at my bibliography file, um, in my documents, bibber, bib, you know, here's that, that reference. Um, and then I can have this reference in that document. And then when this document is compiled, it will actually include my references at the bottom, which is all, again, one of the major reasons why we would use LaTeX is that the bibliography is handled for you. So literally all of this stuff can be done in our markdown. References, LaTeX, HTML, custom code that way, code chunks that you can run like Python and R and Stan and C++ and SQL. Um, you can call R packages. You can do your data analysis, data cleaning. And then you can write up all of this stuff as documentation in line with your code and make these comprehensive and great looking reports, wiki type documents, uh, exploratory data analysis documents. Uh, it, the sky's the limit, really. You can do so much with R Markdown and all the stuff you can put into it and all the things that it that works with it that it's highly flexible and customizable. There's so much that you can do with this. You can have custom parameters so that you can make a parameterized report. So you could say, I want to see all the data for all this analysis for a single stock ticker symbol. And that ticker symbol is used as a parameter throughout the entire document in like 50 locations for all this different analysis, you can change the ticker symbol at the beginning in the YAML portion of the document and like have a param here, change that, and then everything else in the document updates. And you can have that for, you know, anything. Like there's the sky is literally the limit with R Markdown and what you want to use it for. So I'm going to do a lot more videos on R Markdown. Well, I covered just a lot of things at a surface level just now, but I'm going to talk about a lot more about R Markdown and how to actually use it because I do use it for personal as well as uh, professional uh, reasons. Like I actually create production documents in R Markdown and uh, production worthy reports in this format. So it's a really great format. And I highly recommend you learn it. That's all for now. I will make another video on R Markdown very soon.